Niner. That's we'll how we're start gonna start every with the Niner. I just realized we've got some weird background Niner. that you chose. Welcome to Truth Will Set You Free, episode 179. Oh, we're at the laugh truth. There it is. Are we getting the correct one up? You got it? All right, there we go. Like What's this. happening, everybody? We got some special guests on today's show. We are today is a promise. It will be 58 minutes, and that will be it. We will be done dead at 7 o'clock Central Time because Cash does not have a calendar. I do. I just don't like to use it because time never was when man was not. <laughs> <laughs> we got a couple it was a big Minus for like three years. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, you know, time is just, just not real. Time is relative when you're in the joint. Um, guys, like this video, share this video. I'll give you the topics uh, real fast, uh, and then we'll, we'll introduce our special guests. Uh, we're going to be talking about the conflict, whatever is going on in Iran, different opinions on it, different where we should stand, Israel, all these different places, concepts from different perspectives. Um, we're going to be also, that continues into the free Palestine uh, which I like to call the pro Hamas pro protesters. I know that not everybody's going to agree with me on that one. Uh, <laughs> Mark Cuban is now a cuck for the government, Trump trial, and Bishop Mari Mari Emanuel. That's our five topics today. Chaotic truth. It's been a while since you've been on. Uh, we've got some conservative voices. We've got it rhymes with the Quifa. But he's really not. We've come to that conclusion. There you go. We know what he's from. He's from the anti-fascist revolutionary movement. That's our he's bro. However you want to call it, that's our bro. I know. I know because I don't want to use the word A N T I F A, not because of the censors, but also because of the fact he's not really what people think of. Just the, say the, uncle, uncle, Tifa. uncle, uncle Tifa. There you go. That makes sense. Chaotic truth. Uh, introduce yourself if people are new to seeing you on our screen. You got a great YouTube channel, so make sure they know who you are and where to find you. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, I am the Chaotic Truth. You can find me at Chaotic Truth Live on YouTube and on Twitter. And about myself, I am a conservative content creator that uh, talks about politics, geopolitics, and uh, race relations. Ah, this whole time, I, th I thought it was pronounced Chaotic Truth. It's Chaotic oh, yeah. I'm going to have to use that. I'm going to have to use Chaotic Truth. Yeah, I like that, too. Yeah. <laughs> Corey, introduce yourself, my friend. Welcome back. What's up? Good to be back. Thanks for having me. Um, my name is Corey Limley. I am from Nashville. I'm a longtime um, activist. Uh, I go pretty uh, beyond the pale of what uh, the stereotypical activist would be. I've uh, been in just about every news outlet that there is. <laughs> um, that's also international. Um but yeah, I, uh, I'm also a videographer. Um, I work in uh, event production, uh, concert production, and uh, I work on feature films. I, I work in the gra uh, gaffing and grip department. Uh, yeah. So. My name is Cash Kelly. I'm a Scorpio. I enjoy long walks on the beach. I'm 35 and my chick is bad. Let me tell you, gonna make another baby. Oh God, cash! No, that's a. No. I'm, not, I'm joking. No. I'm no. joking. No, Jeez, I can't make a joke. Damn. <laughs> not about that. I'm a that I'm a truth prolific. seller. Jeez. Truth is such a free. Tell There's only so much freedom. Freedom box cleaning supplies you can have with how many kids you have. Casey, not what's happening? happening? That's true. Well, not much, man. Just busy day. I, happy day. I finally got my hot tub, but that doesn't matter. But outside of that. Politics are freaking crazy right now. Utah is going nuts with a whole bunch of infighting within the Republican Party. And I believe it's all set up. I don't know if it's set up or just stupidity. I think I've come to the conclusion the more time it goes on, the more stupid I think people are. But that's just my personal opinion. Um, what's that? I said possibly. 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 All right, Cash, can you make your plea to people? Because we've only got about 70 people watching. We need we need a little All right, little look, boost. this is what I need everybody to do right now. If you love me like I love you, please hit that like button. But more importantly, hit the share button and tell people to come and tune in because we have a great cast today. We have Casey, who is a libertarian. We have Russo, who is part of the LGBTQ movement. We have Chaotic Truth, who is a conservative. We have Corey, who is Uncle Tifa. And then you have me. Which is, you know, Mr. Maga, Mr. Chocolate Maga Teddy Bear, you know? So <laughs> come on, share this out for us so we can get the algorithm broken, just like Russo's dreams. 
Again, episode 179 of Truth Will Set You Free. We're not doing a theme song because it gets hit by the algorithm every time lately. So we're going to try to fix that. All right. Let's uh, real quick, guys, as a heads up, uh, freedomboxinfo.com. I'm going to go ahead and put that in there. We are doing our 730 call at 7 immediately following this show. Jump on if you want to learn more about Shopping American. Cash, tell them about Shopping American, and then we'll start with our first topic. Shop American because it's your patriotic duty. That's why. Just do it, all right? Fill out freedomboxinfo.com, do the job for them, and then you can come hear more about it. Really, is all we're trying to do is get people to, as many people as possible to switch over to Shop in American so we can support our own economy, support American business, create American jobs. You know, that's, that's really what it comes down to. So if you are interested, go to freedomboxinfo.com, join our live Zoom after the show, which is going to be ending at 6.58 on the dot because Russo messed up the time. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Captain Calendar never messes up time. He's maybe a little late for things, but not that. Anyways, uh, Bubba, you got a or uh, uh, Corey, you got a hater in the uh, the comments. Uh, oh, they're they're everywhere. Do you know? Do you know? And I, and I don't always like to engage the trolls, but he's coming in hot and heavy. Do you know Bubba D? Don't know Bubba D. Apparently thinks that you tuck your vagine. That's very interesting. I'm glad you Come got on. a fix. Let's not do that though. Come on, guys. Really? <clears throat> yeah. Really? I, I have a feeling he specifically knows him, but I what I like to stress the fact is we've had Corey on a couple of times now. I I don't always agree with Corey's thoughts, but he is I I've got zero, I've got less beef with him than I do with some people on the same side as me. I will tell you that right now. So yo, Corey, let me tell you something. One thing you have to do yep. is ignore the comment section when it's negative. I know all about negative comments from 2020. Trust me. Oh yeah, you gotta yeah. ignore it and just keep on going. Wish them well, bro. That's all you do. See, if it only happens once or twice, I wouldn't ignore it. But when I mean, you you can't direct that much energy to. <laughs> but no, 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 guys, you're getting us all wrong. We appreciate the views because it mm -hmm. also is pushing the content, mm -hmm. which is also encouraging engagement. So continue, Bubba. We okay. appreciate you. Keep talking Bubba shit about love Corey. You, <laughs> uh, it helps. Whatever helps the algorithm. <laughs> We That's love you, Bubba D. Yeah. You all right with us, bro, bro. I all won't right, go that so far, uh, but Cash, you just got out of the joint, so I got it. <laughs> yeah, you got to be nice. Before we get into the real first topic, though, did you see that the uh, that one woman, the Cassidy Hutchinson, she has now recanted most of her story. Uh, the one who was spoke on behalf of what Trump turning the, the wheel or whatever around. She actually changed 47 answers after testifying, according to the most current document. Uh, Ms. Hutchinson, for instance, in an earlier interview said she did not know whether anyone then told uh, told then President Donald Trump whether some people were at the ellipse or not, where he gave a speech, were carrying weapons, uh, says that she was wrong. Ms. Hutchinson says it actually she actually knew that President Trump was told there were weapons in the crowd. All of these different little nuances have now 47 changes based on what she said. Speaking of Antifa, she said, I was not privy to any conversations to include a word or the acronym Antifa in any of the president's correspondence to the public after the events and or uh, on and after during the events that transpired on January 6th. She said originally she then changed it and said there was an emphasis on blaming Antifa. So it's anything from the actual details of the steering wheel to just any of the verbiage she used in her original thing. And again, this is what the, the poster child of the media was somebody that completely misinformed people about January 6th, painting big a picture facts. that makes Cash seem like a criminal for just being big in facts. Big, big building. Anyways. Oh, all right. Let's do a first topic. Let's get into it right away with Iran. I don't know any of chaotic it's CT, chaotic truce, your opinion on what's going on. Uh, war is it world beginning of World War Three, whatever it is. So chaotic truth, what's what do you what do you believe is happening and what is your opinion on what happened in the last week? Well, <clears throat> well, the, well, first, the details are Iran carried out the attacks in retaliation for a suspected Israeli strike that killed an Iranian military commander, Major General Mohammed Zahidi in Damascus on April 1st. <clears throat> he was killed along with six other Iranian nationals, including another general. At least six Syrian citizens were also killed. Now, uh, Iran, if I'm not mistaken, is America's only on the if I'm not mistaken, on the book's enemy. I don't know if you guys are up to speak. Okay, so Iran is the uh only nation on the planet. So honestly, it probably was not in their best interest 
to uh, uh, initiate that strike. You know, fortunately, their uh, many of their drone. I think what ninety five percent of their drones were shot down. Uh, but it's not in the best interest because it would appear that this would be opening up the doors of a world, a third world war, but it wouldn't be in the best interest for the Middle <clears throat> East, or particularly Iran, uh, to do this. Honestly, I do believe that um, <clears throat> America really should, um, you know, pull, like, you know, should go in there. You know, I think America gets what three hundred billion a year to. America shouldn't do nothing. Well, hear me out for a minute. America gives three hundred billion dollars to to Israel every year, and what I'm seeing on Twitter, if these videos are factual and true, the Israelis aren't really the innocent people here at this point, man. They're 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 you know they're killing. Uh, or can we use the word killing over here? No, deleting. no, we'll yeah. say unaliving. Oh yeah, they, yeah, they are unaliving. <laughs> from my from what it appears to be civilian Palestinians, so. Listen, it's a big brouhaha over there. It's a complicated situation. And uh, I really believe America should should really go in there and stop all of this before it really escalates into something big. But that's just what I believe. I Cash, go ahead. I hear your position. Yeah. Here's my position on it, right? Yeah. I understand what you mean. I feel the same way. I don't like innocent people dying. Either. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's, yeah. that's my thing. I don't like it. But at the exact same token, we have to be real about the way civilizations are run. And yeah. we have to be real about our own interests as a nation. And yeah. our interests align with Israel's nation, be, or with, with Israel's interests, because number one, we need them militarily for positioning to help keep yeah. the Middle Eastern countries that are our adversaries at bay. Number one. Number two, none of this would have happened. None of this would be going on right now had the Palestinians that were Hamas, not Palestinian people, the Palestinians that were Hamas, not committed that atrocious act that they committed on October 7th. However, I don't like loss of life on no front. I don't like it on any front. It sucks. It is horrible. But this is war. Not to say that that's an excuse or that's the way you know that it's okay. It's not okay, but this is the way the civilizations work. This is how it goes. When you run up on a bully who you can't beat up, you can't get mad when they pummel you and start destroying everything that you got. You know what I'm saying? And, and for us, for America, I think America needs to just stay out of it. We can help the way that we've been helping as far. I mean, if we're going to do anything, I guess, just keep helping them with with arms and munitions um, and, and, you know, fighter jets and all of that good stuff. But as far as us going in, in there and doing anything, I think that's a hands off approach. And the thing that people are missing is. Even though Iran tried to pull some stunt and pulled 300 missiles over to Israel, only three of them hit the mark, which really didn't cause any real, real bad damage. I mean, it's bad. Don't get me wrong. But they didn't do what they intended to do. This was just like when you got an annoying little brother and he's trying to fight you and you're like, yo, stop, calm down. But he accidentally scratched your arm when he's waving like this and you're still like, ah, Israel got them on lock. They can't do nothing to Israel. Let's not downplay it, though, because the hierarchy of war, if you keep peeling back the layers, you also, with Iran, you have Russia. I mean, Iran's, a lot of Iran's military is funded through uh, Russia. and they, there's a Russia lot can't of, handle Ukraine, my guy. Well, yeah. We but, ain't worried about Russia. Well, I mean, but here's the thing, though. Like, also, Russia and Putin are really only using probably less than 15% of their military might in Ukraine. They're not no. overloaded in Ukraine. But... Aside from that, Israel, the anti-Zionist, anti-Israel sentiment is old. It's very like it's not a new thing. It didn't it didn't start October 7th. The problem is that the global optics uh, regarding this is falling further and further away from Israel's uh, favor. Like, I mean, just more and more people, even on the right, even on the hard, hard right, that, that anti-Israel. Like there, there's going to be a huge fracture because they got a fucked up government and everybody's starting to well, see it they're, they're doing yeah. some fucked up shit they're doing crimes against humanity and you, war crimes. You, you just use the little brother analogy well i mean if you if you could picture israel as the little brother starting fights with everybody on the street and expecting big brother to come help there's going to come a time where big brother ain't there to help <laughs> and israel's you know you, i mean they keep swinging they keep swinging their might and thinking that the west is going to support them in every move and the problem is with with 
the Hamas situation is any part like if if we were living in Palestine and we were vehemently anti Hamas, just as we are anti Democrat, just as we are anti establishment here in America, if we have that same sentiment towards Hamas and yet we still say, well, I got to protect my family first and foremost. I don't give a I don't I could care less about Hamas. If they find your body in Palestine and you are not an Israeli soldier and you have a weapon near you or you you don't even have to have, you know, you could just be a, a military age man, you will be deemed Hamas. There is no differentiation. There is no there is no nuance. Right. So, I mean, it, you I mean, so these, you know, when we when I mean, how the, the problem is Hamas, you, like we are creating multiple generations of something that's going to make Hamas look like the liberals today, like very weak, very like, and, and the only reason they supported Hamas back in the elections was because Hamas was the only entity willing to fight the occupation. Like there was no other entity willing to fight. And I mean, the, Palis the, pa uh, the Palestinian front, like they, they wasn't, uh, uh, the liberation of Palestine front, they wasn't willing to fight. So. so I have on my notes, one of the things I wanted to bring up is, do we need to intervene? And you guys have all given different reasons, yes and no. And and even Chaotic Truth is kind of, you know, very against the Israeli government in terms of, I think we're all against the Israeli government, but we're also realizing what's happening over there. And I think uh, this was a very important comment. Uh, Israel is a strategic location. U.S. will always fund them. So here's the problem. Our weakness has gotten us to a point where we have to consider what we might have to do to consider to actually uh, uh, maintain stability in the in the Middle East region because we do have to have stability there. Now, this whole the the narrative, like chaotic truth, brought up the fact that Israel is losing the propaganda war is a fact because right now Iran is getting popularity and positive comments on things like TikTok and other forms of social media and saying pro uh, they're essentially grouping Hamas and Iran together against the Israeli people and Israeli government saying this is who we're rooting for. Free Palestine protests are increasing as the the Israeli government killed the soldiers and governors uh who who, who did they kill? They killed the 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 higher ups. They killed two high ranking government officials in Iran. Yeah. Newsflash, if you don't know about Iran, and there's some really great people to follow. I shared a video by a woman by the name of uh, Alicia, uh, uh, Ali Alika Laban, who is an Iranian woman, giving this like, how dare you guys side with the Iranian government? There is no bigger form of scum. Iranian government is the head of the dragon that runs right. all of these different organizations like Hezbollah. They fund all of it. They fund Hamas. They fund Hezbollah. They fund all right. of it. And Iran are these awful people. And you know what? If they've got, if Israel killed two of their people, because guess what? The reason they're doing this is in response to the fact that that Iran is funding everything going against them. And I think that there is a point where if this continues to destabilize, and yes, none of the main missiles got through. If it continues to destabilize, as much as I am always a avoid everything, let's stay out of these foreign wars. We Our weakness has taken us to a point now where we have to keep very close eye what happens there because if it destabilizes any more, I think we do need to come to the back of Israel. I mean, well, I just don't understand. This is what I understand, right? Why would these Middle Eastern countries, number one, think that if they, let's say, for instance, they eliminated Israel, right? What makes them think that we're not going to hit the button? Because that's the only reason why the Middle Eastern countries don't get hit, hit up hard. Is because Israel's right there. If Israel ain't right there and we have no strategic advantage anymore, well, now we got to eliminate the threat. And America is known for eliminating the threat. What we did to Japan just to send a message to get them to surrender. Go ahead, Chaotic Truth. They're not, <clears throat> they or the West are not going to hit the button, button because clearly, and it goes to the next topic, we're one of the next topics about Australia. A few months ago, the West was. I don't know about the whole West, but, you know, people were up in arms about this day of jihad. Nothing happened on this day of jihad. But you have, you know, you know, sleeper cells in every Western country, all these migrants. You never know who these people really are, to be honest with you. Even people who have been, you know, even people who've lived in you know, America, uh, Canada, 
uh, the UK, France for generations, man, they listen, I've been around a lot of Middle Eastern people. They have a Middle Eastern point of view, generally speaking. A lot of these people aren't truly Americanized because their religion is their culture. And so I'm not saying that you are wrong, but imagine if America really did push that button. Well, they probably really would act out a day of jihad. It probably would be a month of jihad. It might be three months of jihad. That's what I'm truly afraid of. So that's why I really believe that there needs to be some sort of uh, rules of engagement in Israel and well, not, I'm sorry, go ahead. Pushback is you got to yeah. understand what jihad actually is. Jihad isn't if we say we blow up a, a, a Arabic country, right? And some of the Islamic people are over here in America. They're not going to wage jihad just because a nation got destroyed because this is their home nation. What happens with jihad in my studies of the Quran, which I read the Quran mm -hmm. and my studies of the Quran, when, when jihad is waged, it is when there is a war waged against you and invaders in your home. If this is their home and we get invaded, then they would have the right to wage jihad against somebody who's invading America, their home. That's the difference. People get the, the, the whole jihad thing confused. A person in Iran isn't going to stand up and go run over to Iran if, or I'm sorry, run over to Afghanistan if Afghanistan got waged jihad. We, we could look at that from the wars that have already happened. The Islamic reason, countries didn't run to go and help them. The reason the West doesn't have that much of a leg to stand on, if y'all go back far enough to when we uh, funded the Mujahideen to fight the, the uh, Soviets in Afghanistan, we funded the Mujahideen, and, and I think we all know who, who that became later on, which was the Taliban. So a lot of the destabilization in, you know, Middle Eastern countries comes through Western interference and Western intervention. And we create quagmires. We create destabilization. And that's just what the West has done. And, and we... We install who we can install who will work with Western countries. We've seen it in Ukraine. We've seen it in Korea. We've seen it, you know, in, in many parts of the world where we force Western influence. And then when there's pushback, you know, we cast these these, you know, dispersions over over entire, you know, cultures, which creates an anti-Western sentiment, which is I mean, you can't really like being an objective, somebody who's objective, who's not like. Who, who doesn't, you know, pertain to, to like claim to be Western or anything like that. If you just look at it objectively, like you could see how the West is so hated. Through I get it. And, and Corey, you brought up something earlier, even talking about the far right being so anti-Israel. One of the things I noticed when I was watching Cr Stephen Crowder yesterday in the morning, he was doing a whole thing because I wanted to really, I mean, the one thing that they they do a great job fact checking, say what you want about uh, Crowder. So they talked really about the uh, the situation in Iran, situation in Israel, and I was watching how he was talking about how bad the Iranian people are, or not the Iranian people, how bad the Iranian oh, government is, all right. these different things. And legitimately, the comment section is 20% F the Jews, F this, hate Israel, Israel down, I'd rather, you know, blow, blow, blow them up, all this stuff. And I'm like, this is what we've created with yep. this with the terminology genocide with the terminology no. like all these things that are incorrect verbiages go ahead casey no i will fight you to the death on this one and you know the term genocide i use on both sides they are using it against each other Thank to you. target a specific group of people that is how they're defining the attack that is all it is you now, may use this it is going that but, but the media I, on doesn't both sides, the the people but in control, the people in control of the narrative don't use you it. You want to know who controls the narrative? Who controls the narrative? Who the is pushing all of this? The media TikTok. and social media algorithms, TikTok. all of it. TikTok is pushing all of this narrative. And that is where this is coming from. And this is why you had in one of our topics that I think we're going to transition to here in just a minute is all of the protests that were aligned yesterday across our entire country to shut down roads. How did that happen? That was not accidental that you had it in San Francisco. You had it in Chicago. You had it in Philly. You had it in Se Seattle. You had it's it in all, all of these places. Exactly. All at the same time, all doing the same thing and cutting down major highways. Do you guys know where funding from that protest is coming from? Can Does I guess? Rhyme with yeah. Loros? Yeah, I was about to say. Does it rhyme with Loros? 
It actually comes from the Iranian Revolutionary Guard. <laughs> oh, wow. That's and so if you want to know where these things are coming from and narratives that are being pushed, you are seeing global governments fight against each other and cause us to get into a corner and force us to divide each other. It's a war that of propaganda. That is what is happening here. Yep. It's a war of propaganda. But 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 let's yeah. but, but in the in that same vein though, we have to also acknowledge that this predates like these sentiments again predate 100%. social media. Yeah. Like they yeah, predate all the way back to the Triple K movement. Yeah. I mean, you go far you go far back enough like where you can eliminate all of the variables that are at play today. I think just people have so much information at the at, in the palm of their hands that the things that we could tune out back then, like you had to literally be like you had to dive into other newspapers out and like nobody's really was doing that back in the day. Like we just knew what was going on in our community if we knew that. Like so we have at the palm of our hand, if something happens right now, we will something back in the day that would take us weeks to find out. We will know in two seconds. So it's 100 percent. And I, so I, that is where we end up in this weird predicament that they're switching to utilize the social media to control certain groups and algorithms like that is not a secret. We know this is happening. Yeah. I got to play this real quick uh, because this last part of Irene, I don't know if you guys saw this, but I have to make a quick reply to it. We don't really have to talk about it much, but this is this is Peter Ducey doing what Peter Ducey does. (laughs) John, has President Biden considered maybe beefing up the public Iran posture to be more than just one word? You're you're referring to don't. Yeah. And so let's talk about and they did it anyway. And let's talk about what we did. Peter. Let's talk about don't and did. Let's talk about Saturday night. He made it clear that he didn't want to see escalation in the region. And and, uh, let me finish. He added military resources to the region right after October 7th. And then when we had an inkling that this kind of thing was coming, he added even more military resources to the region. More destroyers that were capable of shooting down ballistic missiles, fighters, a fighter squadron that was able to shoot down drones. And that's what we did. So you can talk about the, the don't word all you want, but let's talk about what did happen. And what did happen was Iran utterly failed. And if I'm sitting in Tehran right now, I'm betting that President Biden takes it pretty seriously when he says, don't escalate. He's going to act to make sure that you can't. And they didn't. Yes, they fired an unprecedented amount of munitions. Yeah, they did. But how much of a success did they have, Peter? None. Zero. Very little infrastructure. It was an embarrassing failure Freaking for idiot. the Supreme Leader idiot. of the IRGC. So let me be let me be clear real quick, because I saw this and like it was bad and and then it got really bad. Yeah. So he said they said an unprecedented amount of rockets, but they failed. That has nothing to do with the American military. That has to do with the Iron, Iron Dome that Ronald Ronald Reagan got a lot of flack for helping them build 40, 30, 40, 40 years ago and putting that infrastructure in place. And right. he is literally saying that the really the only thing that matters, he said that Biden said don't, and then Iran fired an unprecedented amount of rockets. They did not listen to a single word our president and bullshit chief had to say, period. They listened to none of it. And he admitted it, but then he said, That's what you know, that's what we did. That was the most blatant lie you could possibly have in that situation. Israel in that case defended itself, had nothing to do with us scrambling the jets. That was ridiculous. I think a lot of people have a lot of distrust with Israel as well, simply because of how much lobbying and how much like how much we're beholden to Israel. Because, I mean, when you look throughout even the music industry, I know we talked about this on, I think, uh, the last time I was on the music industry. You have the government like a lot like if you connected lines from Israel to the major industries, whether it be Hollywood, whether it be the music industry, whether it be the government, there would be so much money funneling and so much, so much ties that, that there's another reason that there's so much distrust with the Israeli government, because it's like, well, are we protecting you because we support your morals and values and that, and that we, or, or are we protecting you and giving you iron domes and giving you $300 billion a year because we owe you, we, we owe that to you. Like that's where a lot of the distrust comes from as well. Yeah, and it's not mis. It's correct. I mean, we everybody who knows who owes who at this point, and and I mean, I don't think 
I mean, I keep There's always no owing who. They're all yeah. working together. There you exactly. go. Exactly. That's the whole truth right there. That's They're this all thing. working together. This all of this shit is just to get us talking. That's it. Correct. Yes. Correct. Um, all right, before, when we're let's go into the protests. I, there's a couple videos that I want to show first uh, because I, 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 there some of them are infuriating. One's funny. Let's start. Let's start with the funny one, just because. Well, you know, there's this. The stupid guy. Oh my gosh, this guy. So he. He cemented his arm, just so you know, into a block on the yeah. highway, yeah. Um, and then he's yeah. complaining about the pain. Do you do you know this guy, Corey? <laughs> uh, I know a liberal when I see one. <laughs> so uh, so no, he did not cement his arm in here. He cemented his arm in a PVC pipe. As soon as they pull out that rod, the I, I assume it's some sort of uh, rebar. They pull it out. There's nothing else in there with his arm. He's yelling "ow, ow, ow" when no one is causing well, any. Pain he's gonna. The, the, he'll he'll explain why he's yelling "ow, ow, ow" because they're trying to help him and they can't get his hand undone. No, because he can't. won't let go. Because he won't let go. Just wait. Yeah, let go. Let go of the bar. Let go of the bar. Come on. Let go. Let go of the bar. Stop. Let go of the bar. Let go of the bar. Stop squeezing my hand. Let go of the bar. Stop squeezing my hand. Let go of the bar. Stop squeezing my hand. Nobody's touching your hand. The rebar is cutting inside of my hand. Stop prying my finger. Stop prying. Stop. 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 Let go of the rebar. Stop, you're hurting me. Let oh, my God. God. He's, free. He's free. He's free. He's free. You're free. You're out. free. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. You know, Corey, as our resident uh, protester, I mean, I guess Cash could be considered that, too. He's actually done yeah. time for it. Um, but Corey, yeah. just take me through the mind of morons. Uh, I'll tell you this. So we embrace to to an extent uh, diversity of tactics. Like so, one group's tactics will be far different, and the, the goals will be different. This, I think, this tactic is probably whining pretty, like whining like a bitch tactic. That's yeah, what that was. yeah. Like so, th this dates back to like the G20 summit and the uh, the WTO protest back in Seattle back in the nineties, um, where you know, protesters, pretty much liberal, neoliberal protesters would would chain their arms together to a building to, to form a human chain and things like that. And me personally, I mean, it's not really effective. Like it, that's the that's the bad part about a lot of liberal tactics is the ineffectiveness and the lack of strategy and the lack of, you know, being goal oriented and, and actually, you know, being structural like like it, it, there's no it's uh, it's it's hard to watch some liberal protests and some of the stuff they do it's hard to watch but yeah that was very hard to watch now yeah. that that to me i don't even know where that was that was just stupidity but i do think the one that we do i mean this this is where you talk about the bridges you talk about the um what's the, the you talk about the airport to me this is like what is it actually doing? So I'm going to really quick, we'll play the, the very short one on the uh, at Chicago airport, wherever that is. That's going to be fun. Where'd it go? Let's see. There it is. I got it. It does have a ring to it. So did justice and no peace. Yo, somebody that got ran over, bro. I'm just saying, I, you gonna fuck up my flight? Nah. <laughs> nah. Nah. It's not legal in all 50 states, but I can you tell know, you. No, that's the only states. reason why they did that shit by the airport is because the airport is not in the city like that, bro. They're way out there. If they, I promise you, if they would have tried that shit on Orion, it'd have been a wrap. But my question, somebody got shot. I mean, 
they're right there. Like the, this, they're they're getting the support even for. I know the police officers really can't do much, but this is interrupting travel, international travel. You don't know where these people are going. How the police can't step in on something like this is effing mind boggling. Well, here's what's crazy that the people really on on my side of the aisle don't understand when it comes to actions like direct actions like that like it would be far more beneficial to have that those number of bodies induced something I'm, I, I'm gonna have to be very vague but do something more strategic more more uh effective like structure like like i was talking about like structurally like there was no militancy there it was like you're, all you're gonna do is catch a charge and piss a lot of fucking random people off like they're like you there's so like that's the thing about military strategy. Like you could take that number of people right there. And if you have the right strategy, if you have the right tactics uh, and you and and you perform those tactics well with that amount of people that was in that video right there, you could destabilize a small country doing the right doing the right stuff. But I mean, sure. but just like when you have like You're not condoning destabilizing right, any correct. countries. Correct. Just just. Yeah. yeah proverbially. <laughs> yeah. Hypothetically speaking. But like but. That's why, like, when you look at liberal protests, when they have, like, the, the million women march and they all came out with the pink, you know, hats and stuff like that. Like, it's just like, so you can get a million people together in one spot and nothing happened. Like, or you can get 100 people in one spot or multiple spots or somewhere that isn't a media spectacle or symbolic and just trying to, I don't know what the end game of that was, like. It didn't push the needle. It didn't do anything. But that's I don't understand neoliberal activism. I, I got out of that the first couple of years. I did it back about ten years ago. I was the last get time. Get this man a Trump hat. Someone get this man. <laughs> right. A Trump hat. Right. Get, get it. Put the okay. truth. Hand your hat over to him. If <laughs> Stephen go through the screen. Yeah, I just I think it's absolutely insane. as somebody that travels and like I just. It, for if I'm all I'm always traveling for work and I just look at this and it's the same philosophy as what's happening to you know what what they're doing to to Hamas and Palestine you're creating generations of hate that's all that's happening with this Iranian funded uh protesting Boros Iranian whoever's funding it you're creating a generation of people that literally could care less about activism which there is right. some good to activism right now I'm not gonna lie I would do some dumb shit with my accelerator pedal <laughs> if I was in that yeah. situation, CT, you shared a, you showed a, um, a piece of paper. What yeah. was that they were showing? Yeah, uh, fifty four arrested after protest blocks I ninety or I one ninety near nice. Chicago O'Hare Airport. Now, um, let me reset it to you guys real quick. Uh, a sleeper cell is a group of operatives, spies, or terrorists living in secret among a targeted community awaiting for instructions or an opportunity to act also uh, before i um you know bring uh, hit this home do you guys remember nadel hassan i do not the name sounds familiar nadel hassan was a major not a not a e1 not a e2 not a e3 he was a high-ranking military officer in the, in the army he killed 13 people at fort was it fort hood oh, yeah. in 2009 okay these 54 people here, mostly all liberals and women, they were between the ages of 19 and 32 uh, that were arrested. It was mostly women arrested. I went to a liberal arts college back in the day. Let me tell you who the typical protester is. Someone who is uninformed, someone who takes information and has a skewed view of what basically doesn't even understand the information. And they will support something that will be their destruction do you know how many problem? do you know how many lesbians or people in the skittle community were probably uh out there saying pro-palestine even though they get thrown from the highest building in you, that country exactly you can't be a part of the skittle community in palestine but because these people these liberals their brains are not fully functioning there's some sort of prefrontal cortex uh something that's not firing in their brain these people, I really look at them and I and I pity them to a degree. Sometimes I look at them as domestic terrorists. I mean, you know, blocking 
I'm pretty sure the founders, when they said that you can protest, I'm pretty sure they didn't mean protest critical infrastructure that keeps the country running. Well, I'm pretty sure they didn't have in their mind, well, obviously there were no airplanes back then, but I'm pretty sure they didn't have in their mind, uh, disrupt an airport, uh, disrupt a bridge. I'm pretty sure they didn't have that. So the more we let these people do this, I'm telling you, man. Well, let's we take are, let's take away okay. though. Let, let's take away the stigma of protest real quick, and let's just yeah. go back to like the Haymarket Affair of 1886 in Chicago, of of all places. I mean, you had pretty much what even the biggest unions and the biggest worker strikes in our country's history. They attacked critical infrastructure, whether it be ports. I mean, the Boston Harbor was a main, you know. Uh, that was racist, Boston. Chicago, though. They was like, they was yeah. on something else. That was like, yeah. you're talking, you talking like Klansmen and yeah. all of that. Yeah, that's why I'm saying if you take out ideology, if you take out the stigma of protest, like even if you look at the founders and when they said, you know, the right to peacefully assemble, which I, I think, you know, it. I don't like the word peaceful, to be honest with you, because if you're going to protest, you know, it's kind of like if you're going to punch somebody, don't don't half step. <laughs> you know, you're going to you're going to do you're going to do it. You're going to answer for it, whatever comes with it, which I oh. think if you look at unions back in the day, like the reason we have eight hour work days and the reason we have a 40 hour work week and the reason we have a lot of the things that we have, like like the end of child labor. No. Like, Time out. Let me push back real quick on you. OK, there's a reason why the, the founding fathers put peaceful. A peaceful protest is because at the end of the day, all of us are supposed to be American, even the leaders. They're supposed to represent the American public and, and, and their respective office. All right. So then when you get to the violent part of it, it's no longer a protest. It's a removal of a tyrannical government, right. which that's not what's going on. They're not there to remove anybody. These people right. are there to protest. So us being a constitutional republic, I got it right. Oh, you see that? I hey. did that. Got it right. Oh, you're us coming around, a, Cash. Yeah, us being a constitutional republic, we have to respect that. You have to respect that that rule. Now, now let's say, well, let's say it does get tyrannical, and you do have to go above and beyond. Well, the, then get so, ready to go to prison for a little bit, because right well, now the regime that is in office is going to lock you up. Because if you do that, then that means that you, sir, are a mega conservative Trump supporter, soon to be new Jan Sixer. Yeah, but that's that's but that's that's what the the question you know holds is when the government does become tyrannical, despite whether the protests themselves are effective, ineffective, uh, pushing the needle, whatever, whatever, you know, whatever we measure, whether a protest success is successful or not, when the government does become tyrannical, there will have to be an escalation of protests. And let's just say the conservative movement. Let's just say, let's say, let's, 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 just, let's just say that January 6th, let's say that it actually was, let's say Biden did just say, we are taken through military force. We are overtaking the White House. Like, and, and let's say Trump won. Let's say he won the popular vote, the Electoral College. He won. And Biden said, well, I'm using the military to quit, to stop that. I, I would assume that a lot of these anti-protest sentiments will fall to the wayside. And a lot of conservatives will say. Yeah, because at that point it becomes tyrannical. That is tyranny. But that, that I, finish your statement, Corey, because I think you're going to say what I would say. Go ahead. But, but that's what I'm saying. Like you would at some point feel the need to get out in the street and do something, whether it's take up arms, whether it's to, to take hits at critical infrastructure. I and don't think conservatives have that bone in their body. I That's that what I think we've learned. And I think whatever bone we had in our body, we did January 6th and, and, and that. And then from that, we're once bitten, twice shy. I think conservatives from a perspective of utilizing the concept of protest and that version of freedom of speech, we are f pansies. Okay. No, no, no. I got to push back on that because I, I no. here. I'll agree. The conservative movement. Yes. Are pansies, but not the MAGA movement. And I'm just going to leave that there. And I, I'm not going to say why I said that, but it's just a fact. We ain't, yeah. we're not pansies at all. And we would all the bullshit, you know, if it comes down to it, all right, we got 15 minutes left. We're going to fly through a couple things because uh, uh, let's see what we can get to. First off, I think one of the, the second biggest piece of news, especially for our following, is obviously the Trump trial. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention about Iran. I totally forgot to bring it up earlier. We're not going to talk any more about it except for the fact that I do think it's interesting that not a lot of people are talking about the fact that uh, Biden just gave a shitload of money to Iran about six months no. ago. No, he didn't. Two billion dollars? You mean six billion? Six billion. And it was stopped by the um, U.S. Congress and the Senate. 
But wouldn't well, that what the Congress did their job? Ain't no way. Wasn't that their money though? Like, wasn't it sanctioned money? No, it was. It was during a swap, a prisoner swap, that Joe uh, Biden yeah. gave them an extra six billion dollars, mm-hmm. and then on Congress actually stepped up and stopped it. I was correct wow. when I posted that. All right, cool. All right, never mind. Scratch that. Good job, Congress, for once. Doesn't happen very often. All right, Trump trial right now. It's it's a hush money trial. Um, It is involving the money that was given through Cohen to Stormy Daniels, whoopity whoop, who gives a baker's (laughs) F, whatever. Um, It sounds like the trial could go for six to eight weeks. The judge, I think the biggest topic is the fact that this is the judge that has been put in place. Judge Mershon's daughter, uh, I want to make sure I get this right. She works for a a company that does campaign marketing, essentially. And if you go to Snopes, the leftists of the left and not just... And not just the, uh, the 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 actual description, which I always say Snopes is great for information. It's just that their fact check is typically incorrect. So the claim is the daughter of the judge assigned to the hush money criminal case of Republican former U.S. President Donald Trump worked for Democratic canfa- campaigns involving Vice President Kamala Harris and Joe Biden. And to add that, including Chuck Schumer, even Snopes says true. She was the director of digital persuasion for the Kamala Harris 2020 presidential campaign. His daughter, the judge's daughter, also worked indirectly for Biden-Harris 2020 campaign. The judge's daughter also has her profile picture on X as Trump behind bars, and they're not thinking that this is a conflict of interest. What the fuck is going on? And now this trial could last six to eight weeks. They're saying possibly more. And Trump is being told he cannot leave to campaign. Go to, I don't really care about the graduation because he's never been to any of his other kids' graduations. He's using that as a heartstrings thing. But fact is, this is an egregious violation of everything that is American and constitutional. Cash, go ahead. Election interference. 100%. That's what this is. Election interference. All they're trying to do is make it to where the man cannot campaign. They know he's supposed to be on the road. They know he's supposed to be making trips. And all they're trying to do is stop him from getting his message out, which is kind of stupid if you really want to be technical, because it's all they're doing is making more news media cover this man and what's going on with them, which makes other people tune into True Social and Facebook and TikTok and Instagram and all the other places like X where everything is being talked about. So I see what they're trying to do. But it's going to backfire. It's going to demand. He's he's leading in every poll, bro. And every poll, while he can't even campaign right. So what happens when this case gets thrown out? Because it's nothing's going to come of it. I don't know. This judge has been incredibly successful in getting Trump's team in trouble. I mean, I don't think there's a case. I mean, again, that's the purpose of hush money. She took it. It, it just There's so many things wrong with it. But the thing is, this ju- this judge has been very successful in in uh in jailing and prosecuting all of the Trump uh Trump supporters uh, not Trump supporters the the Trump financial guys like there he's had a couple of them go down for crimes he's been very good at at making decisions that are anti Trump so I I don't know I don't know still doesn't matter they can be anti Trump all they want you have to go by well if you're an honest judge you have to judge according to the law and the man ain't break no law. He's not on his judge, and it's a jury trial. So he, the thing is, he can control the narrative in the case. So I, I again, I think he'll he'll end up innocent. But if there's a chance, it scares well, you me know a what? little bit. Well, you know what? I, I'm a, I gotta be honest with you. To be honest, that's funny. Uh, <laughs> here's the thing: this is New York that we're talking about. This right. is a liberal stronghold. Okay, number one. Number two. They know he's not going to, this is, this is the scary part. He's not going to get a fair trial. And the reason why I say that is because in DC where me and all the other January 6th defendants was housed, nobody got a fair trial that was sitting and that took it to trial because it's a liberal stronghold. It's straight Democrats all over there that hate Trump. Not just a regular typical Democrat. That's just like a Democrat. No, super crazy, wacky ass, nutty people. All right. That just hate January 6th, hate Trump. So there's no such thing as a fair trial. He's not going to get a fair trial in New York, which is why he's going to have ground. If he does get convicted, he's going to have grounds for an appeal, and then it'll get it'll get overturned. We don't have time for that right now. I mean, from a public narrative, if he goes down, we don't have time for that. Go ahead, Casey. No, I I was I'm curious what um, CT thinks about this whole thing. No, I mean this is a perfect example of a uh, two tiered justice system, two tiered court system, and. Everything Cash said is spot on. I mean, he took the words right out of my mouth. This is a this is a witch hunt, man. This is a, a clear witch hunt, man. 
Mm. Yeah. It's because you're both black. That's I totally unfair. <laughs> there. Uh, <laughs> We're both Americans, sir. I, you're gonna I stop cash- labeling us by by the color of our skin and start recognizing us for the content of our character and the bomb ass knowledge that we got. You just hate <laughs> you and <laughs> Cash, we modern, need to do modern day witch hunt. You know what we need to do? I see like so many times I watch like if it's a reality show or something online where it's like it's like from one black man to another, or like us as beautiful black. We need to do a white version. Take everything that they say and like be like, and you have to say it because I can't say it. So we have to say like have a funny ass version where they we duplicate everything is like this is this is beautiful white love all the things you know just sound so ridiculous yeah, like this this is not a beautiful white moment your <laughs> potato salad has so much flavor what did you do what did you put in it <laughs> nothing <laughs> just celery just celery it's just are you celery g- are you guys aware that the prosecutor is pushing for uh one thousand dollar Every time Trump gets, you know, because he has a gag order, one thousand yeah. dollar fines yeah. every time. That's yeah. insanity, man. I mean, I know it's like a dollar to him, but that's insane, man. Yeah. No, it's, Corey, it's, do you it's, feel the same way, or what do you think about this? See, this is where the tribalism in me comes in, because like, if the shoe was on the other foot, we'd all be cheering Biden in that in that uh, courtroom. No, I would I, not. I, I wouldn't I, either. No, I, I would not. I, I mean, in a general public consensus i mean i ain't gonna lie i would i would love biden to be in the courtroom too like i mean i mean the, the, i think like for a speak- crime, yes but not yeah. just for a witch hunt we're not gonna just go and say we we're gonna put biden in court because of some made up no well i That's- mean we also i don't know exactly what the uh how it goes as far as like conflict of interest how far down that goes like if your great 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 grandfather was this do you can you do this if your daughter's done this can you do can you uh can you judge this case? Can you prosecute this case? Like, I don't know. I don't really, I don't go deep into how the conflict of interest thing works. Uh, but I think it's just common sense to know that someone like Trump is, or a, 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 a figure, a cultural figure like Trump. I mean, let's just be real. He obviously had some skeletons that he had to clean up before he jumped in the ring. Like, and just like anybody would, like, I'm guarantee if any of us on here were billionaires and then we got into the political spotlight there would be some uh, some ends we would have to uh, we would have to cut some stuff we would have to we'd have to pay some stuff. So I mean, like, did he pay a porn star to to be quiet about his affair? Like, I, I don't I don't see that as beyond the the scope of far fetched. Like, I just think that's something that just about any person with money. I know y'all see these comment. I know y'all see this comment. Who wants to take that fucking comment? Which one? Which one? Which one? My man Jay Hawk. I love you, Jay Hawk. Don't know your brother, but I love you. I appreciate you. Come on, man. Bro, <laughs> oh geez, man, we already touched on that topic we, like a month ago. We actually didn't touch on that topic. We didn't make it to the. That was with Matt Locke. We did not finish that show. We ended up not getting back on it. So, Casey, if you want to address the the fact that he he wasn't a Russian asset, but he just go ahead and answer it real fast. He, he's he's not a Russian asset. Like as everybody, ta- he has Russian ties, but it is not a Russian asset. I, I don't remember all of the details of it, but when we looked into it for that show, it came back as in a whole bunch of liberal media was building up the story and pushing this narrative. And then only certain people grabbed onto it and started running with it. And so it is nothing of value that you need to be pushing at all. Yeah, that's accurate. Okay. Real quick. Uh, we've got like six minutes max. Um, I do want to really quick talk about Cuban being a bitch, but let's really quick talk about Bishop Mari Mari Emanuel, Chaotic Truth on the hop. Give a little background, and then we'll play the. Or do you want to play the video first? Hey, before you say it, before before you say it, Chaotic Truth, I just want to real quick. Hey, Jay Hawk, just so you know, we weren't cheering for them for him because of the the whole Russian spy thing. That's not what it was. It's because we seen the laptop, and I'm just gonna leave that there. Oh, 100 percent. The whole we weren't cheering, but that's I mean, that's factual. His son involved yeah. with stuff with other yeah. nations. Yeah, I, I think that's so vastly different. But if Hunter went up on trial, I would be rooting for the justice system to prevail. If Joe Biden went up on trial, I don't honestly, if you want the truth, I don't care if we if he's persecuted. Whatever. My preference is he should be impeached and out of office for something if it is very egregious. Paying off a hooker in your previous life before you got not a hooker, a porn star before you got into. I don't give a baker's fuck. Sorry, no, I don't. It doesn't matter. We want the justice system to do its normal course of action and be equal. Right now, we are seeing, as CT said, a two-tier justice system. Right. 
we are seeing it applied differently to the Biden crime family to, than to the Trump family. You are seeing a very vast difference right now. Okay, yeah, Trump, go ahead and take it home, brother. Land the plane. Yep, laptop was real. All right. Um, I, I, go ahead, Chaotic Truth. I got to say this, man. Uh, Bishop Mari Mari, he's in Australia, a Western country, or westernized, uh, founded by a group of people that changed the planet forever. And I'm talking about white people. Let's be honest. Then you have another group of people that want to live like it's the goddamn Stone Age. And I'm talking about Muslims. Let's be honest. Listen, I don't have a problem with Muslims. I knew a lot of Muslims growing up. But that religion is diabolically opposed to Western civilization. And wherever they go, they I'm telling you, they can be activated at any given time. So it didn't surprise me. I mean, it surprised me what happened, but it just did. What these people do is just not surprising anymore at this point. If it were up to me, I would keep them in just the Middle East. I wouldn't invite these people into uh, uh, a Western country, to be completely honest with you, man. To be completely honest with you. Because it's never it's never going to end with these people. And you see what you, you see the havoc that they're bringing into you into the UK, into France. You listen, I'm not telling anybody to draw the Prophet Muhammad, but think about this. A white man in a country that he his ancestors have been in for th hundreds of thousands of years. Let him draw a cartoon character of their prophet. See what happens. But they yeah, can do you're going to want to respond to that. Do, Go for it. But, but, Oops, but they could. But, but they could grape. But they have grape uh, gangs in, in France, and they have grape gangs in Sweden and Netherlands. These people, I'm telling you, about These, I don't see I why totally nobody sees understand them. what you mean. I get what you're trying to oh, say. Not, yeah. I would just, I would just lean away from saying Muslims because it's not all Muslims, and we have to be fair about it. We can say Arab nations who want to live in the Stone Age and hide in caves and all of that kind of shit and wear sandals and and all of that and have relations with animals. That's I understand. But when you're talking about a whole religion of people, that's where I can't get with it because I know Muslims that disagree with everything that they do. And they will be called by Muslims who are super Muslim or devout Muslims, not devout Muslims, and will be considered kafar. They will be considered just like you and me if we were trying to say, oh, we're Muslim, but we don't practice the way that they do. So we can't just generalize or, and just say, you know, all Muslims. We can't put them all in a box like that because that's not accurate. And Some Muslims are a different sect of Islam and do not practice the same way that they do and don't even believe in the same things that they believe in. So in, the, in the historical sense, like even because I know when we get to talking about Western civilization and Middle Eastern culture and things like that, Christians don't have clean hands. Like, I mean, if we go back far enough to the Salem witch trials, I mean, Christians and, and the Crusades and the Inquisitions, like I think just the time period that we're in now, I don't I think. Muslims have the will and the willpower to 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 inflict whatever damage they want to do in the name of their religion. Christians have the thoughts. Christians have the sentiments. They just don't have the willpower to go outside of their suburban home or go outside and commit oh, man, an atrocity Corey. in the oh, name man, of Corey, I hate I hate to cut you off. I apologize, but we are crunched for time. I have a meeting. Yeah. We all actually have a meeting that we have to get to, but I think that there should be a part two to this if you guys are open to it. Oh, why do we have to have a part two? Because we can't finish the conversation because Cash moved the time up to seven o'clock. Hey, all well, right. guess what? <laughs> Maybe business. Go, Cash. Go, go meet everybody on the Zoom. I'll do one more thing for it. We're not, we're not wrapping up here. We're going to take three more minutes to close going. the show. Um, yo, everybody that came on the panel today, I appreciate you. Okay, I truth, you the fucking man. Corey, I love you, my brother. You the man. <laughs> Casey, I love you. Russo. Eh. Unite, don't fight the street light. Don't need to change your whiskey in the world. When you get too stressed out, you got to remember to pray, America, because without God, everything falls apart. I'm gone. Peace out, lovely people that are watching. Thank you so much. Share it out. Like it again and share it again right now. Peace. Woo. All Love right. I wanted, to, I wanted to make sure I shared this before the show is over. Uh, this is Mark Cuban. Being, I love that he's getting trolled on this. Imagine being such a poor <laughs> businessman that you give the government $288 million and think that it's a good thing. He's <laughs> bragging about this. First off, we don't know how much he made, so we don't know if he's actually paying his quote-unquote fair share. And this is now somebody that has become such a cuck for the establishment that he's showing. He says, I pay what I owe. Tomorrow I will wire transfer uh, to the IRS $288 million, which it turned out to be $275 million. This country has done so much for me. I'm proud to pay my taxes every single year. Tag a former president, you know, doesn't. 
so stupid. Like, it might as well. Ju- Why don't you just donate directly to Ukraine? Like, I think it's absolutely insane. I do. While we still have a little bit of an audience here, I want to make sure we talk about everything real quick, guys. I am doing uh, uh, with my daily truce a free speaking class tomorrow night, free webinar at 6 p.m. Central Time. If you want to know more about it, just go to DoubleDownStrategy.com, and I have a whole bunch of free speaking tips. If you can't tell, I speak for a living, and I'm like, why not share with everybody? So it's free speaking course free communication. Please join that. Uh, it's up to 20 people on this Wednesday is how many I'm accepting. Um, real fast, awakenotwokestore.com. I think you see that on the bottom. Use truth for 20% off. Uh, bum, 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 bum. Everything except for cash is stuff on there. Griddownchaton.com backslash truth. Uh, you get 15% off for using truth at the end. If you just go to griddownchaton.com, that's all of your long-term meat, food, uh, freeze-dried supplies. Check that out. And last but not least, there's been actually a lot of people uh, through Kelly buying the water filtration system. CenturyH2O.com. Use Russo10, 10% uh, off at checkout. That is the gist. Those are all the people that help the show go. Uh, No matter how you look at it, Mark Cuban's a bitch. Now let's do the final words. Chaotic truth. What do you got? Oh, no. This has been a great live stream. Thank you so much, man. And uh, hopefully you'll invite me back. Thank you so much. Sounds great. And next time we'll have a little bit more breathing room at the end to do our last 10 minutes and cash won't be such a dirty little bitch. All right. (laughs) Casey, final words. Don't trust the government and taxation is theft. That is how I'll end tonight. Corey, you did it. I just got to commend you for doing a great job uh, on avoiding the, the interchange with Bubba. So. Oh, yeah, I don't I don't even pay attention to that. Yeah. No, um, as you can probably tell, the I do have some fans. They got screenshots of me in their phones. I take up a lot of their data. So uh, but I, I I tell you this my third time on here. It gets, you know, it gets better and better each time, man. I love love talking to y'all, interacting with y'all, man. I think this is a great platform and I appreciate you giving me the opportunity. I love it. Um, all right. I'm going to go and throw a couple things up there real quick. Ah, bum, bum, bum. That's mine. That's in the comment chat box. You've got all the banners you've seen below. Lastly, of course, the Freedom Box call. If you want to jump on that, I don't. Do you have the actual Zoom, Casey, if you want to just throw it up there? Isn't it the same one every time? I got it. Yeah, it should be the same one. Yeah, give me two um, So this is the freedombox.info, uh, freedomboxinfo.com. Um, or we'll really quick last thing we'll do is we'll put the zoom in there again, try to have your name on there. So we know who it is coming in. We've had that one circumstance with cash and an unfortunate person oh. showing gay porn. So let's yep. not let, uh, let CT out. CT has had a fair share of that. Yeah. No. Right. CT. Yeah. Say so what? <laughs> so someone came into uh, some very, uh, inappropriate NSFW content sharing on our zoom and you had it on your shows <laughs> when you had someone come and do porn bomb. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I was getting porn bomb for like a month straight. Jeez, yeah, yeah. It's horrible, man. Damn. What the heck? Yeah. That's a thing? Yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. speaking of porn bomb, we're out. Thank you so much, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Take it easy. That's how we end it? Cool. You're welcome, America.